Elrisa lived to be 96 years old. I can't even fathom that. I stand before you as a 31 year old and still thinking, wow, that that is a, a long life to, to live. And boy, did she live it. But the truth of the matter is, is that it doesn't matter if you, your entire life is three years, 31 years, or 96 years. Death is never an easy thing to swallow, is it, Cindy? It doesn't matter who it is or what the circumstances are. It, it's, it, there's still the sting. Uh, the sting of death. And death is never, it's universal, it's sometimes unpredictable, it affects us all, and further, death is almost always accompanied by fear of loneliness. How can I live without this person, or, or how can somebody else go on without it? And it's hard for us to actually con the, to conceive death as possible, to see life really ending and to think in terms of a final loss and emptiness. And we sometimes associate death with things being bad and negative, but we don't like to use the word death, so we use the words like going to Jesus or um, Jesus receiving someone or passing away or meeting their master or crossing the great divide or receiving our reward. And so we kind of avoid those particular words sometimes. Yet the Bible addresses death quite openly and provides us a way to overcome it. Thanks be to God. When someone in our congregation dies, the grieving family and I return again and again to scriptures and, and wisdom. And, and that's my encouragement to the family. Is the same encouragement that Elrisa would find in times like this is to continue to go back to scripture. To find wisdom, to find strength. And so what I'd like to do just at the very beginning to just kind of get it out of the way and wanted to say on behalf of the family to those that have gathered, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of El Reese's life, for being a part of this family, for words of encouragement, for flowers, for your, your presence, uh, for, for casseroles, for homemade bread and everything that, that is going to come the, the days and the weeks to follow to help pull these people through this time. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do. And to the family, can I offer just some suggestions just to, to begin with and just lay the foundation because we're going to have a celebration. We're going to have a party filled with music because that's what this lady was about. We can expect some stuff out of this service but I want to speak on behalf of what Scripture says of what we can expect from God. Okay, First of all, we can expect God to work good in all things, even in a moment like this. These are, this is a universal promise. comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 20, uh, 28. While everything that happens to us is not necessarily good in itself, under the direction of the Father... Every situation blends together for the symphony, working together in tune and in key for the ultimate eternal good. The second thing we can expect God to finish what He's begun in our lives, it's this promise of Philippians 1.16. It's kind of like, I believe that if Elrisa was to sit down at a piano and begin playing, she wouldn't be satisfied just playing the first verse without the chorus, or without the second, third, fourth, or maybe even fifth verse. We can expect God to finish His work to completion, to finish the song for that matter. <laughs> Philippians 1, 6 says, He will put His finishing touches on you. And last but not least, we can expect the, inter the, the Spirit to intercede for us. What a great promise. Romans chapter 8 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? Praise God that God acts on our behalf. And let's pray this prayer together. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, I pray that we praise You in this moment that we can be made in Your image and reflect Your true life. 
And we thank you for the life of Elrisa, for the love that she has shown for you and, and, and that she has shown amongst us, not only just in word, uh, not only in deed, but in action as well, Lord. Above all, we rejoice for your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again in the coming Christ. And we ask that in due time, that we may share with our sister that clear vision that whenever we see your face in the same Christ Lord, and it's in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, there's a, a few family members that would just like to say a few remarks about uh, our sister that who has departed. Would you come forward and, and would you share your, your stories or your, your precious remarks of this special lady? People often accuse women of having multiple personalities, but I, I promise I don't. My first statement is actually going to be from my brother, who was not able to be here. He says, I need, this is when he was coming up to be able to say goodbye to Grandma. I need to vent into the wind for a moment. They say God never gives you more than you can handle. Sometimes I really think he overestimates my abilities. I am driving across the country to say goodbye to one of the most amazing women I've ever known. She taught me kindness by never turning away a stranger. She taught me how to be a fierce competitor through many games. Oh dear. Through many games of Uno, Skipbo, Ruma Cube, and Farkle. And she taught me to love through the support and devotion she had for her husband. She had the cooking ability, the cooking skills to make it as a chef, the musical ability and star quality to make it in Hollywood. But instead she used her talents to serve those closest to her. And I consider myself lucky to have been to be counted among those she touched. I am thankful for these, this 20 hour drive because it gives me time to reflect on the many joys she brought into my life and to plan the final words I will say to my grandma after her 96 years on earth. Please pray for her and for all she touched as we celebrate a life well lived. Then after he came back, or after he was here, oh dear. As I drove to Oklahoma, I did so with the knowledge that it would be the last time I would see one of my life's greatest teachers. As she slips silently into my grandfather's waiting arms, I find myself looking for ways I can carry the torch she left behind. If I had to choose a single trait of hers that I admired most, it was that she never hid her light. She lit up every room she walked into, and she brought joy into people's lives using her God-given talents. I remember being a kid, being so excited to see her pick up one of her dozen or so instruments. <laughs> and play expertly as we sang along. And I would add to, she could not read music. And, but if she ever heard you sing, she, would, she could play it. Somewhere along the way, I lost some of that joy. I became jaded. Maybe it was all the talk radio. Maybe it was all the time dodging rockets. Or maybe it was just growing up. I became too prideful to sing for my grandma. I remember years ago, Pauline begged me to sing for my grandma because she understood what I was too pig-headed to see. So I refused, and to this day, I don't know why. It was just one of those events that stick out in my mind. I couldn't get past my pride and turn my grandma's disappointment into joy. I share that story because I want to learn from it. This year, in honor of my grandma, I'm going to do my best to use my talents to bring joy, and I challenge everyone reading this to think of ways you too can spread joy with your talent. As for myself, I 
I, I grew up listening to grandma play and I took piano lessons when I was little and didn't follow through, didn't practice. Actually, my idea of practicing was to see how fast I could get through the, through the practice for that day. But um, later, later on in life, I realized what a joy and comfort music can be and I, and I see what it did for my grandma and um, the, the talents that she had. I remember I was practicing this one song and I just couldn't, I got the whole song fine except this one part. And every time I, every time I went through it, I stumbled on that one part and grandma was in the kitchen. Where else, right? Grandma was in the kitchen and after I messed up on it, it must have been the, the 10th, 15th, 20th time, she, she yelled out from the kitchen, get it right! And I did the next time. And I think every time after that. And so I think about her, and when I think about her, I think, get it right. We only have one time to go through this world. You only get so many chances to do things, do some things over, but you don't get a chance to live your life over. I would, just as Matt, I would challenge you to live a life that shows the light, that shows the light of the Jesus Christ that she loves so dearly and not accept second best. I, I picture Grandma, and this will be the last thing I say, I promise, because you don't want to get me behind a microphone. Um, the, uh, my students will tell you the same thing. I truly believe she, she said one of two things after she saw Jesus. One, one, either one was, where's the nearest piano? Or, I always wanted to learn how to play the harp. I'm not so much a musical person. The way my grandma touched my life was more in the kitchen. And I have tried in my adult life to spread the joy she did by baking and cooking for other people. And it dawned on me the other day that anyone who has eaten my, my Christmas goodies that I make this huge spread and take to work has been touched by the kindness of this woman. And all I can hope is that they can continue to spread it on. She is the only person in my life who never looked at me like she was disappointed in who I am or the mistakes that I have made. And I only hope that I can pass that on also to other people, to love unconditionally and to always ask, are you hungry? Do you need something to eat? Because to see her in the kitchen making Zwaybox or beer rocks or cinnamon rolls, I would like to go back and be able to do that with her just one more time, to listen to her talk, and to tell her that I love her.
we all obviously already know that this woman was incredible. But I also wrote some things similar to my brother as sort of a tribute that I put online. Um, starting from a very young age, she taught me how to sing for the Lord, how to make donuts, bread, and pasta, sway box, beer ox, cinnamon rolls, apple, cherry, pecan, lemon meringue pies, dill pickles, canned beets, all kinds of jams, cakes, ice cream, cookies, candies, and everything was from scratch. And not only that, but then she showed me how to give it all away. Just give it. Um, she taught me how to decorate birthday and wedding cakes. She taught me how to skin and fry a chicken for dinner that night. She taught me how to appreciate a good looking man. She taught me how to play Skippo, you know, Remicube, Farkle, Dominoes, how to laugh until my stomach and face hurt, how to give to others selflessly, how to serve God daily, how to love and almost never get mad, how to be a good wife, a mother, and grandmother. She taught me how to be a Proverbs 31 woman. For years I have prayed that God give me the same opportunity that my children be able to learn from this woman. I thought I had made it because I'm almost five months pregnant, but I didn't. So I just have to try to pass on every single thing that she taught me to my children through her legacy, through stories and pictures, and even at my best attempt, it will never be what she was. Thank you all. I've known her since I was a child. And I remember there's a story that whenever I was really little, I was scared of coyotes who coming into the farm all the time. And my grandpa got really angry with me, not really but more frustrated, but she would sit me down and she'd sing for me until I was not scared. I have never known anyone as selfless as she was. And I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to sob because she told me something when my grandpa died that I'll never forget. That he is in a better place. That he is loved by God, by Jerry, and by his parents, and by his brothers and sisters, and by her brothers and sisters. Everyone, please just remember who she was and don't miss her because she's in a better place. She loved every one of you. Some more than others. Well, more longer than others. And I know it's not the time, but... Would you sing a song that she sang to me for many years with me? Um, her and my grandma sang it for me for many, many years. I'll start out, and if you know the song, join in. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh 
do Lord, oh do you remember me? Dear Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. I messed it up. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Okay, I'll, I'm done. I'm sorry. I think a long time friend uh, that uh, they've got some history together that uh, they uh, they have done me the honor and the family the honor to come and play a few songs or a song or a couple of songs two songs um, we're getting the band back together <laughs> with El Risa and De Gary and Donna Lawrence would uh, would like to, to honor uh, El Risa with a few songs Hello? Are you hearing? Is it on? We were kind of latecomers in um, El Reese's life. Some of you knew her many, many more years than we did. But for several years, um, we sang with her at the Senior Center. My introduction to the Senior Center, I, we were kind of new in town, and I didn't even know where it was. And she came to me one day and she said, Donna, I have a doctor appointment and I can't sing at the Senior Center this Friday. Would you go play for me? And I looked at her and I said, I don't even know where it is. I don't know anybody there. What are they going to do if I just walk in the door and walk over to their piano and start playing and singing? They'll probably say, call the police and tell them I'm inebriated and need to be put away. <laughs> But, uh, so I, I begged off of that one, but I said, I will go with you the next time you go and I'll know the ropes. And so I did that and found myself with an appointment every week. <laughs> and Gary joined us with the bass and she knew every song in the book. In fact, she knew every song that was a favorite of the senior citizens that came in. As sometimes as they come in the door, she said, oh, we've got to sing such and such a song because now she's here. Uh, amazing. <laughs> and so we're going to do a couple of songs that we sang with her uh, and played with her at the senior center. <coughs> Cross the emblem of suffering and shame, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophy. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, the old rugged cross So despised by the world Has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. 
Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown In the old rugged cross Stained with blood so divine A wondrous beauty I see For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down Someday for a crown. the blind man God give back your sight praise the Lord I saw the light yes I saw the light I saw the light no more darkness no more night now I am so happy no sorrow in sight praise the Lord I saw the light and we're going to do one more one more verse of that can you hear me without that mic um, we never ever played and sang a song that slow without reason. Um, she got in there and got right along and, and played fast. And while we were discussing what the next song was going to be and what key was in, she was already going on it. And she loved to play piano du duets. And I never did ever know what we were going to sing the next time. She, she'd start all of it in and, and I'd be up here in these high keys and I just had to, <laughs> to catch up with her. So we are going to do this last song a little bit more like we did it with Elisa, the last verse, I think. And you may join us on the chorus if you like, but you have to keep it. Okay. <laughs> I was a fool to wander astray, played the gate and there all the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, 
I saw the light, yes, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night, now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight, praise the Lord, I saw the light. appreciate the privilege of, of participating in, in the service today. You know, we all come to a point, uh, there's only two people that uh, didn't have to go through this. Eli Elijah and, and Enoch. The rest of us, there's coming a day when we too will have left a legacy of some kind. Alarisa left a tremendous legacy. I've only been in the family seven years. <clears throat> Never met so many cousins in all my life. You know, I don't remember El Elarisa and the rest of the family when uh, Barlene and I got married in 2007. But something really happened really funny a few months ago. Marlene's sister had twisted uh, my arm, both of them together, that we stay overnight and, and participate in the program that Marilyn had at the fellowship home. And I was to tell some stories, and uh, Marlene was to join the rest of the family and sing. We got to the fellowship home, and uh, Elarisa went over to shake her hand, and she said, uh, now where do you fit in? And uh, I quietly said, well, uh, I belong to Marlene's. Oh, you're the preacher. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I was asked to share Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Let's pray. Our Father, we want to thank you for this celebration service. We want to thank you for this word. And Lord, we want to thank you for the life of this special lady. And Lord, as the family grieves and remembers, we pray that they will look to you, the God of all comfort, who can touch our grieving hearts, and somehow you bring us through. Lord, thank you for your awesome love. And Lord, we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, the first Christmas that Marlene and I were married, we, uh, they had a family dinner at El Arisa's home here in Watonga. After the meal, everyone gathered around the table. 
and you've already heard that uh, that she liked to play Farco and she liked to play Skipbo and I was introduced to both games and you know one of the intriguing things was the way that she could throw those dice she had a unique way didn't she The other thing that uh, about, uh, about a month ago, when the, when the family got together for Christmas at the fellowship home, one of the things I observed, she was not doing very well. As the family was visiting and, and it looked like she might be asleep, all of a sudden she sang out a hymn. Wow. Special lady. Some time ago, uh, Cindy and, and Elarisa and some of the others were at, at our home. And uh, I inherited my, my Grandpa Young, Grandpa George Young's violin, but it was all apart. I had it restored. Now my grandpa Young did not play gospel music. I'm not sure what he played, but it wasn't gospel. Well, the highlights for me was when Elarisa picked up that old violin and played some gospel music. Wow. I don't have that talent, but I love to hear it. You know, one of the things as we look at this scripture, we know that Elarisa could say, the Lord is my shepherd. She left not only a legacy, but left a testimony. And folks, every one of us will do the same, one way or the other. And it'll be a very special testimony But each one of us will leave a legacy of some kind. And then I like the last part when the psalmist paints a picture of a special banquet. At the banquet, the Lord will anoint with oil. But then the last verse says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Folks, that's an awesome promise for a believer who can say, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not somebody else's shepherd. It's her shepherd. It's my shepherd. Then I like, I like 2 Timothy 4, 7. So she's had quite a battle, this lady has. But I think she could say in, in, uh, in the last few days, I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Monday morning, she completed the journey. To the family, you have special memories. I would challenge you to write them down. So your children, grandchildren can see it. The Lord bless you. I never would have thought that I would learn to play the piano at 40 years of age. And Grandma had probably given up on one of her grandchildren learning a musical instrument beyond high school band. Uh, I have a song that I would like to sing and play. This wasn't planned, and it's unexpected. But there's one voice here in this room that has not been heard. And I do believe my grandmother would love to hear him sing. 
Which of these? This is probably not an obituary that you'll see in the newspaper in the days to come or anything like that, but there was an article that was written in our local newspaper by, uh, you heard Donna uh, play just a little bit ago, and I just, I thought that it was appropriate um, reading for this particular time instead of a, just a, a, a skeleton of an of a, uh, obituary. And it reads like this, if you were to walk into the Watonga Senior Citizen Center on nearly any Friday morning, a little bit before 11 o'clock, a quick glance to your left would reveal a form of a white-haired lady seated, seated near the window up close to the piano. You'd likely see her holding a violin to her chin with her left hand, and with her right, she would be plucking the strings and adjusting the pegs intended on getting those strings to resonate and tune with one another. Boy, was that a challenge. When the tone satisfied her ear, she lowers her instruments and sits quietly waiting for a gaggle of other musicians to arrive, gear in hand, to join her their impending weekly gig. 
Upon the revival, she smiles with relief and greets the group as they ready themselves their instruments. Then begins one of the shining half hours in her week. She would, will sometimes play her violin, sometimes play the piano, and other times she would sing harmony. She would doubtlessly do all three simultaneously if she could figure out how to manage it. You would have to guess that Our Lady of the Violin is Elrisa Wilter Scheffler. Elrisa was born on a farm northwest of Fairview on August 3rd, 1918, every bit of 96 years ago. Her parents, Herman and Agnes uh, Newfield Wilchert, Wilchert Wick, Wickert, <laughs> thank you, had migrated to the United States in the 19, uh, 1880s. Her father from Germany and her mother from Russia, upon landing in the United States soil, had first traveled west to Inman, Kansas, then later migrated to Fairview, Oklahoma. When Elrisa first saw the light of day, she was welcomed by her parents along with three sister, Agnes, Lena and Viola and three brothers, Herman, Harry, and Irwin. A couple years later, she became part of a welcoming party of the rival of the final edition, Raymond, who evened the gender score and completed the family. Music was a big part of family life as long as Elrisa can remember. Her father played the violin. Over time, each child learned to play at least one instrument, and most of them mastered more. The truth is that Elrisa seldom uses a song sheet. She plays entirely by ear and she knows them by heart, lyrics, and almost any hymn or gospel song you can name. Elrisa remembers starting to learn to play guitar whenever she was around 12 years old. She later added to her repertoire the piano, organ, ukulele, and mandolin, just about every instrument that she could get her hands on. And from a very young age to adulthood, Elrisa sang and played together with her sisters and brothers at family gatherings, homecomings, community events for the church services and socials, you name it. She was there. Most of any gathering of friends and neighbors presented an occasion for making music and the family would entertain with popular tunes and folk songs and old classic, but mostly they sang gospel. And one Sunday morning at the Watonga Church of the Nazarene, Elrisa invited my husband, and, she, and this is Donna speaking, and me to join some people who would regularly meet at the nursing home on Sunday afternoons to sing, and we found quite a gathering there and prepared to, to make music for residents who were also assembling to listen. Among the performers were, not too surprisingly, Elrisa and three of her young granddaughters. This, this ministry had been started by Elrisa and Wanda Roach some 12 years before when the nursing home closed. That event didn't stop Elrisa and Wanda's project uh, one little bit. They moved their operation over to the senior center on Friday mornings, which expands to the, the presence of the Vi Lady of the Violin patiently waiting for her musical partners in the senior center described earlier in this tribute. Elrisa grew up way of many Oklahomas, young, grew up in the 20s and 30s helping on the family and they kept chickens and milk, the cows and teamed horses to pull the wagon. She remembers at harvest time lugging the heavy milk cans full of water out to the field for the crew working in the hot sun. It was on the farm that she also learned women's work. <laughs> From her mother and older sisters, her skills included sewing, cooking, baking, helping to raise a garden and to preserve and produce from the garden. And she learned to do laundry the hard way. It developed into an accomplished seamstress, making most of her clothes as well as her daughter Cindy's. And Cindy also mentioned that her mother made a number of crochet items. When she was school age, Elrisa walked with her siblings three miles and I'm sure it's just like anything else, in the snow, uphill, both ways. <laughs> when the weather was bad, someone would hitch up the team and take the children and buggy. Even though uh, the children worked hard, Elrisa looked back upon her childhood as a happy one. Besides, her brothers and sisters had lots of cousins and nieces and some neighbor kids for playmates. Among them was uh, Ravina, her very best friend, 
With so many children available, they had plenty of players to make up two complete baseball teams. Surprising to me that she would mention, oh, how I love baseball, a woman after my own heart. She confessed, they played ball at school some, and the best that she remembers the games were the neighborhood kids. Other mentionable occasions for El Risa include summers whenever uh, relatives and friends got together for their huge 4th of July picnic and neighborhood uh, harvest, uh, harvestings. Whether that it was a prompting of El Risa's girlfriend or whatever that it might be, she was well prepared on uh, taking the duties of a household wife whenever she married her, her husband. El Risa, her daughter, her oldest child, Cindy Sullivan, recalled what a hard worker that, that her mother was and how that she was gifted at so many things. In addition to appreciating the beautiful clothes that Elrisa had made, Cindy praised her mother for cooking and baking skills and claiming her mother was known throughout the community for her cakes and pies and bureauxes. Cindy still seems a little awed by the fact that her mother dressed up 100 chickens in one day. Besides her daughters, Cindy, Elrisa, and Leo raised their two boys, Danny and Jerry, and Danny Scheffler, and their wife, Casey, or is it Cassie? Cassie. Farm not far from Elrisa's place, Danny is also employed by Blaine County, working on the roads with grandeur. Elrisa's second son, Jerry, who is never robust, is now deceased, and her husband, Leo, passed away January 11th, 2004. And this uh, article goes on and on and on, and one of the things that stick out to me is uh, one of the, the granddaughters stand up here and they, they talk about all the, the, the legacy that was passed and, and the meals that they're able to cook and that, that uh, they give credit to Elrisa. And not only that, one of the things that I think about was not only was it that they are capable of doing this, but at the end of all, all the baking and the cooking and, and all that, that she was willing to give it all away. <laughs> My uh, gospel reading for this morning, for this, this a couple more moments with each other, if you, comes from Mark chapter 12. Starting with verse 41, it says, Jesus sat across the collection box for the temple treasure and observed how the crowd gave their money. Many rich people were throwing in lots of money and making lots of noise. One poor widow came forward and put in two small copper coins worth a penny. In other translations, they would say that it wasn't even worth a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I assure you that this poor widow has put in more than everyone who has been putting money in the treasure. All of them were giving out of the spare change, but she, from her hopeless poverty, has given everything she had, even what was needed to live on. And those of you that might be familiar with this story, what is put into the offering plate, two mites, is what it was considered, worth a fraction of a penny. It's not about the worth of the mites that captures Jesus' attention. And I expect the story to go a little bit differently because I could see Jesus standing up after he, she puts her two coins in the offering plate. And I, it's my imagination that I, I'm thinking that this story needs to go a little bit differently. Jesus is watching the offering plate and everybody's putting in, this woman puts in these two coins. I expect Jesus to stand up, go put his hand in the offering plate, get those two mites out and give it back to this woman. No, 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 you don't, you don't have to give this. I know, I know how much that it, it costs you. I know how much this is worth to you because in the story, this widow has given everything she possibly has. To you and I, a fraction of a penny might be, well, I can find that in our couch cushions. <laughs> this is all that this widow had. And I, I feel like that it's a little bit reckless for Jesus just to allow this woman to give this small fraction of a penny. In fact, what he does is just the opposite. He actually elevates this woman who is probably overlooked by everybody else and makes her an example of how to give. 
And let's be honest, in this business, in the business world, does it make you feel a little bit uncomfortable about that story like it does to me? Because if he's asking this woman to give everything she has, that means that he is also asking me as well. And he's asking you to give everything that you possibly have. And why is it that he doesn't come to her defense? Why is it that he does, just doesn't give that money back? instead of just devouring this woman's livelihood. And maybe the point is that, we're, that, that, that they weren't devouring this woman's livelihood or, or her house, that they could, they, they, maybe it's that they couldn't even possibly do that. Because she was already willing to give of everything that she possibly could give. They couldn't take, they couldn't take away what she wanted to give at the very beginning, because it was already in her heart, heart that she was willing to give. Does that sound like somebody familiar to you? <laughs> I believe one of the reasons why that Jesus wanted to elevate this woman was because that he saw something in himself. Because we know the characteristic of Jesus Christ that would be willing to give even more than what we are willing to give out of our own pockets. Because Jesus Christ Himself gives His life. He gives His all for all. God came right down from the, the right side of the throne of, of God and He made His dwelling amongst us in, in human form. And God of all creation, God of Creator for of you and me made His dwelling amongst us. And all of authority was given to Him so much to the point that no one else had authority of whenever He was going to die. But He knew right when He was willing to give it. And there is not one part of the story of our salvation where Jesus plays the victim. Jesus, we can hear that story and we can think, oh, poor Jesus. But whenever we know the character of Jesus that was willing to give up for Elrisa, for myself, for you and everybody, He is always in total control because He has the authority to do so. And it wasn't because he submitted to the authorities of others that were willing to take away this precious life. It was already in Jesus' heart to give. I think of El Risa and the, the moments that we had shared, and it almost seemed like that it was a saddened time whenever the, uh, the person over the intercom at the uh, senior citizen center say, okay, it's time to pray and everybody gather up. We're going to pray over the mill and make announcements before. And it's almost like the most sad moment of that day is whenever it was over. Because she didn't want to stop giving of her talent. She didn't want that to end. Another thing that, that Pastor Young was saying is that she would fall asleep in the, in the chair and all of a sudden something would startle her and she would start singing a hymn again and she was ready to give of her talent. This woman was poured out. This woman was very gifted. And she did not neglect that gift at all. She was willing to give it. I know some people that have that are very gifted, that only choose to show that at a certain moment's time so that they could shine. The truth of it is, is that whenever Elrisa, even though that she got enjoyment out of it, it was the Lord that was shining. There wasn't a lot of songs that I heard her participate in that, were, that weren't gospel. She wanted the Lord to shine through. And it was God that shined through. Irma Bombeck is quoted in saying this, and I think that this is very relevant for this time. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left. And I could say, I used everything that you gave me. I think that's what Elrisa would say, and I, maybe she wouldn't say it at all, but we know that about her. Let's 
pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for this life again. And we just ask that you help us today. We ask that you, you uh, give us strength for the days to come. And we know that your, your faithfulness endures forever. And your love endures forever. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a, a few ladies that would like to come up and sing, and we're going to show us some slideshows, uh, some, some pictures, and maybe some videos uh, while that, that those songs are being sung. We'll just apologize to Cindy and Danny. <clears throat> we weren't expecting a large detour this morning. We had several songs that we that we were planning to do together and we're very disappointed that we couldn't do that. But we are going to try to sing I'll Fly Away and then um, I'm not sure who's all singing Amazing Grace, but we'll figure it out. <laughs>
At the end of every Friday morning that we would play together, that song would have to be sung. And every time that a family would gather for a meal, a prayer would be prayed. And it's the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to invite you all, would you stand with me and let's pray this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to have the viewing, and you have the option of coming forward and, and uh, participating in the viewing. Uh, otherwise, the, that you can just silently slip off. We're going to have the, the graveside here in a little bit at the IOOF Cemetery. Thank you for coming.